Dr. Adalja, I want to talk about the x-axis, which is the day after day of it. If we day after day after day do vaccines in America, in the United Kingdom, wherever, is it a linear path to success or does it build on itself and really get some good constructive acceleration? I, I do think it builds on itself because what happens is you'll start to have parts of the population immune and that makes it much more difficult for the virus to spread. So when you've got a population that is 100 percent susceptible moving from 70 to 50 or whatever combination that is, that's going to make it harder. So I do think we will start to see benefits even um, uh, with the hospitalizations, actually, especially because of the hospitalizations, because many of the people that are the early vaccinees are people who live in nursing homes, people that are <clears throat> elderly, that have high risk conditions. And that's really what's driving hospitalizations and has been from the beginning. So I do think we'll see a respite in the hospitals. Uh, all of this is really contingent on us moving fast, though. We don't want that South African or Brazilian variant, which, which may be a little bit more difficult to deal with, to really take hold here. So we've got to accelerate significantly and keep ahead of it. We are getting better statistics, even in New York, folks. I saw a headline of better statistics on cases, deaths, on hospitalizations. Is it a pause before a wave, or can you say there's true hope in the goodness of these statistics? It's definitely a sustained trend that we're seeing, that this wasn't a fluke of reporting, which is initially what many of us were worried about. But the, the thing is that it's, it's tenuous because we've got these variants, like the South African and Brazilian specifically, which are more contagious and may pose problems for not only vaccine immunity, but natural immunity. And, and the, the, the goal, the vaccine works well against those. They will be in terms of preventing serious disease, preventing hospitalization, preventing death, but it doesn't seem to be as effective at preventing infection. So we've got to stay ahead of that, or you will see cases rise, because those the variants that are more contagious just by natural Darwinian principles are going to come to dominate eventually. So that's why we've got this, this window to really, really go forward with no speed limit and get as many vaccines into people's arms to, to keep those away from here. How many variants could we see from now until year end? It's, it's impossible to count because this virus has been making new variants all the time. It's just that only a few of them reach the level where they're garnering headlines. And those are the ones that change the function of the virus. And most variants, most mutations don't. But at least the UK, the South African, all of those, uh, the Brazilian, the, the Californian variant, these all have some, some differences in them that either pose an issue for the vaccine in some way, not serious disease or hospitalization, but in preventing infection. Or, or and have definitely been shown to be more contagious. So th th this is going to be something that will continue as long as we've got spread, as long as we've got over 100,000 cases occurring every day in the United States, you're giving the virus ample opportunity to, to spin off new variants. So the best way to stop variants is to actually get control of this virus through the vaccine and through those simple common sense measures we've been talking about since the beginning of masking and uh, avoiding crowded congregated places, washing hands. Uh, Dr. Daljo, we're just getting some breaking news out of Pfizer. This is not a vaccine trial. It's just earning per share fourth quarter. I believe that a lot of these vaccine producers are actually selling the vaccine at cost. So, you know, the fact that they're rolling it out doesn't, shouldn't make that much of a difference on the quarter. Uh, what I'm confused about, Dr. Daljo, is that I can't really make out what's scientific evidence and what's mudslinging amongst European um, world leaders, right? So we had France saying that the UK is now reckless. They say, you know, they're taking a jab at the the way that the UK is proceeding, which means that you get a Pfizer vaccine, but you have to wait 10 to 12 weeks to get the second jab. I mean, what do you know? What's the, the right way of doing this? So ideally, we want people to get the vaccine and then get the, sec the first dose and the second dose on the approved schedule. So f three weeks for Pfizer, four weeks for Moderna. But we know that that's kind of not necessarily always going to be possible in an emergency situation. And it's important to remember that you do get protection after the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, probably about a week or so. We don't know how long it lasts. We don't know how durable it lasts because the trials were done on a single dose regimen. But when you get that second dose, you're still going to get the same benefit. You don't have to start over. So if the second dose is, is delayed for whatever reason, you, you'll have that period of time where we don't know how long that first dose immunity is going to last. And it, obviously, it's not as robust or strong as having two doses, but it is not, it's, it's not nothing. And, and we do see benefits in the clinical trial after one dose. So I think the goal is to get keep people on the schedule. But if there is a delay, it's, a, it's not the end of the world. We don't have to restart. And I think some of this will hopefully be obviated when the Johnson & Johnson vaccine gets approval, hopefully all, all around uh, the world as well. And it's a single dose regimen. Is there a right way of vaccinating the, you know, the population? Is it above 70s and then above 60s first? Or should it be frontline workers? 
So I think it, that, that's a, a, a decision every country really has to make. But we know that we want to stretch the impact of this virus and what this impact is, what this vi vaccine is about, sorry, is about uh, really Im decreasing the, the death, the morbidity, the mortality, putting hospitals in, into a place where they don't have to worry about capacity on a day-to-day -day basis. And in that situation, you want to make sure your healthcare workers are protected, but you also want to make sure nursing home residents, for example, those who still make up a high proportion of admissions, a high proportion of deaths, that they are protected. So I do think vaccinating the elderly and the high risk makes sense from an epidemiological perspective. And it also makes sense to make sure your healthcare workers are vaccinated. I think you can do both, but what we're, our goal really is to just defang this virus and make it more like the four other coronaviruses that cause common colds by getting people vaccinated and making it something that doesn't ever usually require hospitalization. And I think we'll get there with this vaccine, even against the variants.